Hello there Wembley fans, this is John Motson. I've commentated on a lot of goals, a lot of great saves. I've seen the cup lifted countless times, but what I want to tell you about today is five things that you never expected to happen. I'm starting in 1983 because of a very weird thing that happened when Brighton and Hove Albion got to the FA Cup final. While Manchester United prepared in the usual way and came to Wembley by coach from their hotel, what did Brighton do? They came by helicopter, would you believe? And it landed not too far away from the stadium. So rather than the TV interviewers getting on the coach to talk to the players that morning, they climbed into the helicopter and did the interviews there. Well, I'm taking you back now to 1996, the cup final between Liverpool and Manchester United. United, of course, had won the double two years earlier and Eric Cantona was at his absolute peak. Liverpool, unfortunately, weren't. They came out before the kickoff for the pre-Wembley walk in the most garish white suits you've ever seen. Well, once the game started, it was proved that those white suits did the Spice Boys no favours at all. Manchester United won the cup with a late goal by Eric Cantona. Another Wembley quirk for you now. Now this is the mango ball, which is used throughout the FA Cup in these modern times. Years ago, of course, it was usually a white ball, but there was one exception, and that was 1973, when Leeds played Sunderland in what proved to be a memorable final. The man who'd scored with the orange ball was Ian Porterfield, and it meant that 2nd Division Sunderland upset Don Reeves' leads and lifted the FA Cup. Well, one of the strangest experiences I had as an FA Cup final commentator came in 1987. The game, Spurs versus Coventry City. For quality of football, one of the best cup finals I ever covered. But what I didn't realise when the teams came out was that half the Spurs players had the sponsor's name on their white shirt, Holston Pills as it was then, and the other five, plain shirts. Something had gone wrong in the dressing room when they handed out the kit. Fortunately for me, the ITV commentator Brian Moore didn't notice either, and it wasn't until late in the first half that everybody realised this mistake had been made, and the shirts that should have had Holston on were taken out for the second half. Well, Trevor Brooking didn't used to score with a header very often, but it happened in the most unusual circumstances, really, the FA Cup final of 1980. Stuart Pearson was involved in the move, so was Alan Devonshire, and the ball was crossed, actually, so fast that a lot of people didn't catch what had happened. But Trevor Brooking had stooped and headed the ball past Pat Jennings to put West Ham in front. I was the commentator and fortunately managed to spot that indeed it was him. And just going on from that, another little quirk in that cup final of 1980 was when Willie Young brought down 17-year-old Paul Allen. These days, it would definitely have been a red card for a professional foul, but on the day, Willie Young got away with it. Arsenal didn't though, West Ham won 1-0 and carried off the FA Cup. So there you are, those are my five motty, quirky moments that have happened in the FA Cup final here at Wembley. And believe me, you never know on Cup Final Day what might occur.